The MV Sigulu sails across the gentle swell across Lake Victoria, the largest freshwater lake in Africa. It is on the way to Sigulu Islands, a remote enclave or Namayungo district. This vessel was introduced in 2020 to connect the remote Sigulu and Lorwe Islands to Lugala mainland in Namayungo district. Adjacent to the neighboring state of Kenya, the island of Sigulu has lush vegetation and its previously towering canopy of trees continue to vanish as a result of deforestation as trees here have been failed to pave way for gold mining activities. We looked at the mining cadaster and uh, within the Mayingo district and especially around the shores of Lake Victoria, even within the islands of Sigula, which is uh, one of the big islands that has been known for mining in that area, we have not issued any mining licenses there. What we have there are exploration licenses. So there are people that are, that are looking for gold within those areas. Uh, two companies have been licensed around that area to do exploration, but not to mine. Sigulu forms part of the Nyokian Busia Kakamega Granite Greenstone Belt. Gold was first discovered in the Busia Gold District in 1932 in the Osipiri. Small-scale mining operations on vein and alluvial deposits began soon after this discovery in Tira, Makina, Amunkakine and Osipiri villages and are still ongoing. With the exception of Tira and Amonkakine, where gold is recovered from reefs consisting of hard rock, most of the gold is recovered from alluvial material by artisanal and small-scale miners. Recently, gold rushes have been reported in the Bode, Nakudi and Wusuma gold mines in Namayinga district. This part of the island is a host to scores of artisanal and small-scale miners who use rudimentary means to dig the balls of the earth with pickaxes and other tools in search for gold. It is also enveloped by poverty and its population can barely identify with the president's announcement in July that surveys indicated that the country had discovered gold deposits worth $12 trillion, a news item which reverberated across the world. If it's proven that Uganda has $12 trillion worth of gold deposits, this could be a boon for one of the poorest countries in the world and outstrip the entire market cap of all the gold mined ever. Men and women converge here to search for the precious stones. Many of the women engage in activities such as panning. The men have to rely on ladders to access deep tunnels that often turn into death traps. But the communities are not part of any mining and they don't even feel like they have the minerals within their areas. Because In right February 2022, go, Parliament passed the Mining and Minerals Bill, which the President signed into law in October. The Act recognizes the role of artisanal miners who are required to pay about 380 million shillings for a license. It is a fee that is too high for many artisanal miners that eke a living across the gold mine pits in the country. I realize that licensing is done here centrally. And uh, most people, especially in villages, they don't separate land ownership with the minerals. And you're going to find most of those guys who are mining there, they are authorized by the landowners. So the landowner, someone goes, either rents a space, buys it, or pay some kind of money, depending on the understanding, and they start doing what? Mining. And you're going to find most of the mining activities there, they are older than the active licenses. Elemental mercury use is also prevalent in gold mining here in Sigulu and other areas in Namayingo. Mercury is mixed with gold containing materials, forming a mercury gold amalgam, which is then heated, vaporizing the mercury to obtain the gold. This process can be very dangerous and lead to significant mercury exposure and health risks. In some jurisdictions, mercury use may be illegal or restricted in certain ways.
First of all, I told you we don't allow the use of mercury in uh, water bodies. But secondly, you also need to understand <coughs> the process of uh, gold extraction and at what stage in the gold extraction uh, uh, process mercury comes in. Mercury use comes in after they have panned and obtained a concentrate. Now at that stage is when they add mercury to the concentrate to now separate the gold and usually that is not done within the water. The Minamata Convention on Mercury, a global agreement for reducing mercury pollution, recognizes the risks of using mercury in artisanal and small-scale gold mining and calls upon nations to reduce and, where feasible, eliminate mercury use in this sector. Many of the gold mine activities have left a destructive trail that pose a threat to biodiversity, human life, agriculture and aquaculture, threatening food security, nutrition and sustainable livelihoods. Research shows that byproducts such as mercury and heavy metals including lead are benign but work their way into the food chain and pose health risks to humans and animals for generations. When it rains across the Sugulu Island, some of this toxic waste from these gold mining activities is often swept into the lake. The resulting contaminated water, referred to as acid mine drainage, a toxic cocktail, is destructive to aquatic life and poses a threat to fish in Lake Victoria, a vital source of food security and nutrition. What are the regulatory bodies doing to hold this ruin? We, we, we have separated two things, mining space and the processing space. Now processing uses a lot of what? A lot of water. And in our area, we've constructed over uh, four boreholes for the community. Where there was a small swamp, uh, not a stream, but a swamp, where we get water from for processing the what? The gold. And then uh, we have uh, a dumping place for putting those waste tailings. Now, ores are crushed, you extract the gold, and then you can redo the ores, the, 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 the tailings. But there's a time when you reach that. Uh, they're almost depleted. So th those are called waste tailings. You can dump them somewhere and uh, in a safe place. I should call it in a, a gazetted place. Uh, the NEMA Act, first of all, prohibits any mining operations within 200 meter radius from, uh, from all water bodies. So we do not authorize mining. We do not issue mining licenses within that radius. So we, we also, when we are licensing mining entities, we, we ensure that the licenses are at least 200 meters away from uh, any available water bodies. Uh, embarked on uh, a journey to formalization, what we call formalization of uh, artisanal miners in this country. We have encouraged uh, a lot of them to form associations. And then once they get into those large associations, we can license them and give them areas where to, where to work. So under the Ministry of Energy, we do a lot of uh, sensitization of uh, mining communities. We sensitize them on proper mining methods, uh, on uh, extraction methods that do not pollute the environment, and then we encourage them to formalize their operations uh, for the benefit, first of all, of security of tenure, because if you have uh, a mining license issued by the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development, you're not going to be chased from where you're working. Secondly, you're also going to, we are also going to make sure that you work within, within the confines of the law. You don't pollute the environment and where you have uh, caused damage to the environment, you restore at the end of your operations. The area is in ruin as the landscape is dotted with excavated pits and trenches. 
Some of these men involving in artisanal mining at the island were previously fishermen who fled the lake after the UPDF Marine section and forced a terror campaign to get rid of those engaged in immature fishing. At Bohehe, once a thriving fishing village located in Bukana sub-county on the shores of Lake Victoria, Namayingwe district, gold mining activities have led to deforestation. Gold pits occupy land which was previously cultivated for food crops. Because when the mine started, this, this hill you see, full of, of, of pits, was cultivatable. And now cultivation does not, does, cannot, have, cannot go on because of the, the destruction of the, pit, of, the, of the miners. Those miners have gone on digging pits leaving the whole, the, 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 whole, the whole hill with the stones. The big trees which were there was, were also always, always slashed, sometimes used for burning the, the hard, hard rocks inside the pits. Studies show that soils at their active and abandoned main sites were more of sandy particles and contained significantly higher concentrations of heavy metals but lesser concentrations of soil nutrients than the farmlands and the relatively undisturbed areas. A resident says safe drinking water cannot be pumped as it's contaminated with mercury. Some people came, they wanted to give us safe water, to pump safe water from the lake. But according to their survey, it was found that the water has been contaminated with mercury. Craters have formed across Tira sub-county in Busia as gold mining activities continue to damage the environment. As we go into the formulation of the regulations, some of these issues should be relaxed a bit somehow so that uh, we can uh, coexist government and we know we have to pay the taxes. That there is a campaign underway to sustain safer gold methods relying on the construction of underground tunnels. The open cast method of mining that uh, we have operated for quite a long time, about three years, but uh, from the challenges that uh, we'll be able to share with you, we are slowly uh, changing to underground method of mining with the timbering. But uh, the actual work plan is that uh, within the shortest time, we needed to have at least uh, one concrete uh, concrete uh, shaft so uh, apparently that is what we are doing we are working with uh, NEMA on uh, a project that is funded by PACT and that project is uh, aimed at uh, at promoting the use of alternative uh, extraction techniques for gold that do not involve the use of, uh, of mercury. We are trying to promote uh, the borax technology in uh, gold recovery, uh, which is uh, less dangerous to the environment and does not lead to release of uh, mercury within, within the environment. We, as miners, have for a long time known borax and we have also known mercury. These two, the two, issue, the two things don't do the same thing. Borax has its own work and mercury has its own work. So the alternative that the government is giving us for the, use of, for the eradication of mercury is the use of borax, which does not work as a mercury. So eventually, I don't know what will happen, but I think somehow along the path we shall collide. But these methods are costly. Some, some alternatives that are present currently are out of the, of the financial league that most miners operate within. I mean, setting up a small cyanide leaching plant, could, the costs of setting up a, a cyanide leaching plant could almost come to the cost of building a house. And you've seen the community where most of this mining happens, of course. It is not far away from Tira, where porous outlets across the Uganda-Kenya border have turned into major struggling routes for mercury. Once in Uganda, mercury is sold openly in shops. But if you are just saying today, tomorrow, no mercury, 
I am beginning to think so loudly, being a person who sits, who, who brought at the border, that government is already creating indirect employment for smugglers to begin smuggling in more gold, more mercury than they think that they are eliminating. In the new law of the Ministry of Energy, mercury is prohibited. It has a punishment of over three years in jail. Uh, you go and say, okay, this mining operation is illegal and should stop. And then you find uh, you're getting calls from the LC5 chairman saying, don't, you can't send away my voters. You can't send away our people. They're earning a living. So that's, that's, that's the political interference. Otherwise, if we didn't have that, today you chase away people from an area. Tomorrow, their leaders are telling them to go back. With climate change already creating a food security crisis and an existential threat to mankind, gold mining activities that are destructive to the biodiversity and pollute water sources ought to be halted.